Tail today. My name is Shaylin and this is part two of my video series about tips for making a wall hanging quilt. My first video, if you haven't seen it already, um, I'll link below, but that one covered some organizational tips for just getting ready for making a wall hanging um, and some cutting suggestions for the pieces as well as basting, how to use the basting adhesive spray to help keep your pieces and your quilt sandwich from shifting, and then also how to make the wall hanging itself, putting the little um, hangers on the corners. So check that one out if you haven't already. And this video is going to focus just on free motion quilting the wall hanging, which as I mentioned before, wall hanging quilts are nice for practicing your free motion if you're newer at it like I am. So I'm going to show you in this one how I did just a basic meander and some stitching in the ditch which I did on my September vintage truck of the month wall hanging quilt and then I'll also show you how I did a pumpkin so I free motioned some pumpkins all over um, my October vintage truck of the month quilt as well as some meandering so I'm just kind of trying to stretch my skills as I go and push myself to try new things and so I'm just going to show you what I've figured out so far. I hope you enjoy and that it gives you some inspiration to try free motion quilting on your machine. So I am ready to quilt now and there's a few options doing it on my own machine here. I could use a ruler and maybe just do lines like a cross hatch design where they're going diagonal lines going both ways. I could use an erasable pen and draw design to kind of be a guide to sew with um, with free motion quilting or I can just kind of do a meander or my own design um, just freehand. Now with the sewing machine it's kind of like a stationary pencil and you're moving the paper around so I haven't done a lot of uh, free motion quilting on my home machine in all honesty so I'm gonna give it a try just to push myself. I figured this is a small a quilt, a wall size quilt, so if I don't like how it turns out, it won't be that devastating compared to a big quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and try my own design on it and uh, quilt around rather than ruler work. I was looking at all my thread colors and decided I'm going to use this isocord thread. I don't see the color name on it, but there's the information. Um, it's just kind of this aqua color like in the truck so I figured it would blend in with the truck. It will show up more um, in the background and I was looking at it with um, the sunflower here. It shows up a little more in the brown but nothing too stark or drastic. Same thing in the tires. It has a little bit of sheen to it just like the uh, sheen in the ombre fairy dust fabric. So I think I'll do kind of a meandering design in the main parts, um, maybe some smaller like circles or loops within the sunflower. And I think for the lettering, I might go back to just my regular straight line stitch and stitch in the ditch around the letters since they're all straight and there aren't any curves there. So when I do the free motion, I'll want to change my uh, foot on the machine and put the feed dogs down. Um, I'll also want to use a faster speed because I don't have a stitch regulator and so if I move too slow you can get really long stitches and then short ones so the quicker I can move the more consistent my stitch lengths are going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up and get started and fingers crossed this turns out well. All right, so before I start on my quilt, I have my bobbin with that aqua color thread. I just wound it about maybe a little over a third of the way. Um, and then I also have the spool up top here. Um, but it's always a good idea to test your tension and just make sure that it looks good. I'm using some quilting gloves here too. These are Fonz and Porter quilting gloves that just give you a little more grip as you move your uh, quilt around, but I just want to test out because I changed the foot to my J foot 
for my straight line stitch here. I usually use my quilting foot. So I just want to make sure it's working well. All right, and it looks like the beginning there got caught under, but yeah, this part looks good. It doesn't look like anything is missing or loose or so the tension looks good on there. Um, and it's not, you can't see the bottom thread coming through. So um, I'm gonna keep the tension like that. And I decided to stick with the straight stitch first. I'm not using, um, this is the free motion foot here, which I'll be putting on later and taking the feed dogs down, but I'm gonna do the lettering first um, in the ditch with straight lines and just some pivoting, and then I'll do the free motion. So I'm gonna start with the S first and just have to kind of maneuver around. I might have to move my camera, um, but I'm gonna just start in a corner here and I'll just lower the needle to make sure it's hitting where I want and adjust if I need to. That looks good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start, and I can go slower on this one since it's in the ditch. Um, I don't want it to go all over. I wanna try and keep it where the two fabrics meet. Um, but since I have my feed dogs up and um, I'm using a locked stitch here, it'll be fine. It's not free motion. To the end I just want to uh, keep the needle down but lift my presser foot just pivot around keeping the fabric smooth attempt at in the ditch and when I got to the uh, starting point I just did a back stitch and cut it on both sides here and I'll go through and cut these off later but you can see some spots are better than others I wasn't quite in the ditch here but down at the bottom of the S you can't see the thread which is the goal of in the ditch is you know that you can't see it very much but I still think with the aqua against this pink zinnia fabric it still looks nice I'm gonna leave it like that it gives it a little bit of a blue outline so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the E and the P before I do the free motion quilting I wanted to start with the sunflower with loose loops in the petals and tight circles in the center to give it a more textured look I'm just trying to maintain a consistent petal speed to keep my stitches as uniform as possible don't be afraid to pause to regroup your ideas before moving on to a new section or if you feel like it's going faster than you can plan. If you plan on washing the quilt, I would backstitch before cutting threads for sure. You can cut them close to the top and backing or bury them, which I have another video demonstrating how to do so. Now I'm ready to meander. I start on the outside edge. If you're worried about bunching, you could start from the center working your way to the outside edges, smoothing as you go. The spray adhesive basting felt secure though, and I felt comfortable starting from the edge. I do some loops, turning the quilt in a circular motion, but also some back and forth curves, trying to avoid straight long lines. I decided to go between the letters and around them, but didn't want to go over them. That was an in-the-moment decision because I wanted to see if they'd stand out more once the quilting was done. My goal was to make the meander density consistent across the quilt, not too loose or too tight. 
All right, so I think I have filled it enough. I didn't want it too dense except in the sunflower here, so I just ran my stitch off into the batting. And I did notice a spot above the pea that looks like it needs a little more, so I am gonna go back to that spot um, just so it looks kind of consistent with the amount of meandering. And I was avoiding going inside the letters, so I think I'll just um, continue to avoid it. And I might just pick up on my trail here and just attach it to the trail and keep going. And I'm just gonna kind of end, lift that up, yeah. Just make it look like it stops on the trail too so it doesn't just stop randomly in the truck. All right. I did need to fill the bobbin. Um, again, I kept doing it part way full. Um, and I ended up having to do it um, three part way full bobbins. So I would say that it took more than a bobbin, maybe just a little more than a full bobbin to do this kind of meandering. So I'm just gonna trim these and then I'll show you the final result. All right, so here is my finished quilting job with just a meander. I did some loop-de-loops and just kind of would swirl around and keep going. Um, it definitely standing back, I can see the quilting, but the aqua thread doesn't show up too much from a distance until you get up close. And I can definitely see spots where I, my stitches got a little bigger. If it was really bad, I stopped and took them out and redid it. But, um, I think... Overall, I'm pleased for this being really the second time I've meandered on my sewing machine. Um, I did put a little heart in the window there. And then you can see my um, sunflower has that tighter looping inside of it. But most of it is just kind of a, just a large meandering loops. But I tried just besides in the sunflower to just kind of space my meanders all over, nothing too tight on there, but definitely took more bobbin thread than I had initially anticipated. Here's the back also of the quilt, and you can see where that sunflower had the tighter loops there, but blends in pretty well and just kind of recedes. You can definitely see the shadow of the quilting in there. Now that I'm warmed up with my meandering, let's go ahead and free motion a pumpkin. Here's a close-up of my October truck of the month, and I did a meander again, but I also free motioned some pumpkins into it. And so I used kind of a light beige thread, which shows up really nicely on the cream fabric here. When I got to the blue truck, it's harder to see. So I know there's a pumpkin in the truck yeah, right here, which is a little tougher to see. So um, I may, you know, do more of a meander if the thread color blends in and not do the pumpkins in there. And that one actually was a really nice one. Um, but you can see I have them just kind of looping around as part of the meander. Some of them are going sideways. Um, some of them might be upside down. I did the stitch in the ditch in my October lettering again and did a lot better on this one, I think, than September. It's just as I do it more, I get better, which is the story of just about everything. But um, yeah, I have one in the middle of the O there. I have different sizes, so there's another one and 
We've got a little one that's kind of running off the edge here. Here's an upside down one. So lots of pumpkins. There's another upside down pumpkin. So I just tried to kind of spread them out evenly amongst the meander. And I practiced several times just on some scrap fabric. And then when I felt ready, I just kind of jumped in and there were a few times I really had to undo something and I'll show you what I do when I undo stitching in free motion when I do the demonstration. But most of my pumpkins have five segments, but you can see some of them, I wanted to end them all at the top and um, still even after practicing, sometimes I got a little mixed up so I have an extra segment or there might be one like this one that only had four. But then I really started getting into the rhythm of the five segment pumpkin, which is the one that I think looks best. And really, it's all quilted in here and, you know, it's, it's very forgiving, the free motion quilting. If your stitches aren't the exact same length or something, once it's hanging up on the wall, you don't really notice it. But like I said, I'll show you a little tip for you know, if you do get big jumps in your stitches, really long stitches. You know, or you know you don't hit where you want to um, how you can take those out and and redo them so I'll show you that but I just wanted you to see kind of a close-up of what this one looks like I thought it might be easier to see the motion of a five segmented pumpkin first on paper so I start with just a circle kind of an oval shape and then I move down to the left hand side and back up to the top and then I move down to the right hand side and back up a little to go back to the top. So the goal is to end at the top and then make a little stem and a curly cue that will meander into the rest of the quilting. To demonstrate, I'm just gonna use some scrap fabric that is spray basted to some batting and backing fabric. All right, I've got my free motion foot on and I'm starting with that oval shape. Once I get back to the top, I'm going to go back down toward the left, backtrack a little and go back up to the top, then come down to the right of my original circle. When I touch it, I'm gonna backtrack and then loop back up to the top. Now from here, I will make my stem You can make it straight or curved. Try and keep that little initial string out of the way. I can always cut it out later, but then I'll do a little curly cue there, and then I would meander across the quilt top. Here it is again from a different angle. And what's nice about this pumpkin is it's pretty forgiving. When it's inside the quilt, especially if you're using a thread that kind of blends into the background. If you don't get it right on the money where you want it, it's still gonna look nice. Or if you get the order of the segments wrong and you end up at the bottom, you know, you could always make another segment an extra one or have one fewer, it's still gonna look nice. You just wanna try and end up at the top when you're done. but. I find that the more of these I make, the better that I get. And when I was making this demonstration, it had been a few weeks since I had done my October wall hanging. And so it took a few pumpkins to get back into the swing of it again. When you're done, you can just cut all the threads off. Now let's say there is an error that I do want to take out. Like right here, maybe I just you know, cut into the segment too deeply. So what I would do is pull out those stitches in the part that I want removed. And I might go back a few extra stitches past, you know, where the error is. And make sure that you also pull the threads out from the back and cut them loose. You just want a clean surface to work with. So I take those stitches out and now I'm going to put it back under the machine, put my needle at the start of the error and then just backstitch and connect it 
where I left off. take a look at it now it's a little better I still have some extra stitches showing there from where I back stitch so um, I can always just take a stitch out if need be but again this will most likely blend in with my quilt top because I'm not gonna have such a contrasting thread but take a look at the back too. make sure you get those threads off the back or you can bury them go they seem to be getting a little better with each one lots of pumpkins you can join together you can make them any size you'd like but the process is going to be the same I'll also show you some very humble beginnings here so these were my very first attempts after I did a drawing I wanted to see if I could um, do it on just a scrap piece of fabric this one it's a little tougher to do with a single piece I think it's easier to do it with um, the batting and backing on it but um, I did practice quite a few on scrap fabric before I went to the wall hanging so um, I just want to show you that it did start out as a struggle and it got easier the more that I did. So this wraps up the two-part series on tips for making a wall hanging quilt. I hope you've got some inspiration from here or maybe some new tips if you've never tried it before. And I plan on continuing to push my free motion skills as I make more of these vintage truck of the month wall hanging quilts. And as I figure out more designs or just tips that have made it easier for me, I'll make sure to continue sharing those, whether in a separate video or in a monthly progress video. So please subscribe so you don't miss those and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.